let's start from the uh, very hot topics you were talking about this on the panel. And uh, everybody talks about the rising risks, and you can see it in the media about the recession, which is absolutely inevitably coming. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, and uh, what are the uh, thoughts on uh, China? China so I, I think in, as far as there is a, a lot of um, experts who are predicting a recession globally, I think that I can speak a little bit about uh, China's economic structure and why I think, and, and, and I think a lot of economists believe that China will very much avoid a recession. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Um, China's a very unique economic structure in that differently from the United States and Europe, it has a one-party system that allows it to implement monetary and fiscal policy swiftly and more accurately. So it's important when people think about investing in China or thinking about China to understand that there's distinguishing factors between the way China can navigate and manage their economy. China has a tool, Trevor, tool chest of monetary and fiscal policy and because of that unique economic structure they can navigate that uh, very, very uh, quickly. What's interesting too is you'll, you'll hear a lot about the trade wars and how it's impacting uh, China and you'll hear from President Trump that uh, China needs this more than, than they need, uh, than the United States need this. But I think, I think in fairness to the China and the economy, I, I think that what we're seeing in China is the growth of the consumer. It's in the middle of a transformation from a manufacturer to a consumer. So the consequence of these tariffs are not as, as, as strong and as impactful as we might read. China is, is transforming to a consumption society. 60% of their GDP growth is based on consumption. Mm -hmm. So as a consequence, I think its unique economic structure and the fact that the consumer is very strong, continuing to grow. I think that China has the tools, the monetary and fiscal policy tools, whether it be in uh, the reserve ratio requirement and or high rates. The current rates in China are 4%, mm -hmm. 3 and 4%. So they have ammunition, they have firepower in the toolkit. So on a monetary policy, they have, have um, the tools to help navigate. On the fiscal policy, they also have an incredible targeted ability because of the unique economic government structure to be able to target fiscal policy to help offset any recession period. And what does it mean for uh, average United States consumer? Um, one would think for the average United States consumer, um, you would think as the global economy grows, China is, accounts for 30-40% of global growth. So as China grows, there's more and more opportunities for the Chinese, for the U.S. consumer in China. Maybe we can talk about, not so much on the compute, the consumer, but the, the U.S. investor. Right. So the U.S. investor has a tremendous opportunity now in China. Um, if we look at where, particularly in the bond market, the Chinese bond market, if we look at where the Chinese bond, government bond yields are, they're three and a half percent. Mm -hmm. If we compare that to the U.S., which is 180, mm -hmm. or Europe, which is Bundesbank, which is minus 50, I mean, who would ever buy minus 50? So we have to think about, U.S. investors should be thinking about an alternative investment, and internal investment would be in the Chinese bond market. So, but any emerging market, what does an emerging market need to be successful? It needs to have liquidity, and it needs to have access. And in an emerging market, you need a currency that's strong and has it's liquid, and you need a, a bond market that uh, has access and liquidity. So there's two important milestones, maybe I'll just mention briefly. 2016, on the currency front, in 2016, the IMF announced that the renminbi, the Chinese currency, would now be a reserve status currency, which is very a big milestone. So now you can trade it on SWIFT. Mm -hmm. It's now the fifth largest in volume size. And there's over 1,700 SWIFT participants that are trading the RMB. Also in the US, they're launching globally, they're launching, and particularly in the US, we just are launching a currency, RMB currency hub, which will increase liquidity. On the Chinese bond market, 
um, there has been launching, it's called the Bond Connect. So those that have been investing in China in the past, they might think that it was very, very difficult. The, the, the original plan was called RQF, and I like to say that the R and RQF stood for red tape and the Q stood for quicksand. So to try to be able to trade Chinese bonds in uh, offshore was very difficult. So they announced the Bond Connect, and the Bond Connect allows investors, U.S. investors, all offshore investors, to invest in mainland bonds through Hong Kong. So it's as if there's no quotas, there's, it's, it's transparent. So now why is it an interesting dynamic in addition to the yields? Mm -hmm. It's important to note that China's bond market is the second largest globally, mm -hmm. 13 trillion. Uh, it's liquid, it's access, uh, it's highly rated, it's A rated. Uh, in fact, they've now, uh, China, as we said, is opening up. They're finally in allowing rating agencies to come in. So S&P is now uh, in China, and they've just rated very highly, for example, Chinese banks. Moody's rates uh, China single A. Uh, it's a very good opportunity for U.S. investors to get involved. And finally, from an investment point of view, the correlation of investing in Chinese bonds, government bonds, is very low correlation to U.S. and European bonds, which is another great uh, um, benefit. And the final is that if you time to position yourself because as this market grows, and it will because bond indexes have finally decided uh, of opening up to include Chinese government bonds in their emerging market indexes. So for example, the Bloomberg Emerging Market Index, uh, the JP Morgan Emerging Market Index, now have mandates to increase up to 5% over the next 6 to 12 months of investments, which is a natural flow of U.S. and offshore dollars into the Chinese bond market. So in totality, it's a great opportunity for U.S. investors to get a great yield at a, I, I would say, a, at, a, at, a, at a very good rating. And are we talking long-term investments? It can be short-term, it can be long-term. But you, I think your, your better pickup is in the longer term. Mm -hmm. um, and you want that liquidity, you want that access. But if you want short term, there's also short term availability. For example, uh, my, my bank, China Construction Bank, uh, double, you know, double A rated, top uh, single A rated, but very mm -hmm. strong bank. The Chinese banks are the strongest banks uh, from a liquidity for capital. We are in the top tier of capital. I can, I can honestly say that from a liquidity point of view, uh, CCB is one of the most liquid banks in the world. So from a shorter term view, if you want to buy, invest in China, mm -hmm. you can, for example, buy a CCB CD mm -hmm. or a CCD medium term note and get premium yields at a, 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 at a strong rating. Short term, it's rated by Fitch, S&P and Moody's in an A1+. What are these... Uh Alternative investments, the, the asset classes, the... Uh, well, I would think it would be the bonds. So, the bonds. so mm -hmm. it is because it's emerging market, mm -hmm. it is considered an alternative investment class. And it also fits into that category because of the low correlation. So if you are currently invested in the bond market and you want to offset, uh, your diversify your risk, the low correlation between the U.S. and the Euro and other emerging markets enables you to add uh, yield mm -hmm. uh, and d helps diversify. So I think that's where the alternative investment is. So is there any um, influence of the European Central Bank's uh, low, uh, low interest Well, rates? I think that's where the, the that's where the the real reward is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the ten years in China is three and a half percent. Uh, the ten-year in the U.S. is 1.8, mm -hmm. approximately. I don't know where it is today. And in uh, in Bundesbank, it's minus minus 50. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, it's it's hard to conceptualize. In fact, I have a dear friend of mine that I, I worked with at my prior institution, and we were talking the other day. He was visiting in New York. He's European. He's he's, he's Belgian, and he was saying how it's amazing with negative rates. He had a floating rate mortgage mm. on his home, and now the bank pays him on a monthly basis. Wow. He says it's not a lot, but it's an amazing. <laughs> so Mike, Mike, Many it people just, want that, would want that more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but, but if you have that to borrow, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want to invest, uh, it, it's so clear that China offers a, a significant yields, highly rated, 
um, uh, strong economy, still considered strong economy, um, and it's uh, with very little risks. So it's it's to me it is a I hate to use the word clear as a day. Clear as a day. <laughs> no brainer. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. And then, uh, in conclusion of our short uh, interview, how do you uh, find and how do you uh, are you enjoying yourself in our conference? So I I, I love the venue. I, I love the way it's set up. I think you you really brought the the deck and your whole team. Really, I thank you. Uh, amazing speakers. Um, really relevant, topical, smart people. I think the the most important thing in any conference is your speakers because you don't want to. We're all busy. We don't want to waste a lot of exactly, time exactly. on a day not walking away with taking away. And I, I've, I've listened to most of your panels today, and I've, I'm, I'm happy to say that I've walk, I'm walking away with more information than I had when I walked in. So I think it's a, it's a great, great conference, and I'm happy to be part of it. Well, thank you so much, Frank, for joining us. Oh, thank you're you very so much welcome. For this interview. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.